Hey guys, this is Mr. Mitchell. We'll be talking about uh, chemical names and symbols today. So you see a bunch over here, different kind of names and symbols for, for chemicals and elements, and uh, that's what we're going to kind of get into today. So what we already know, uh, in class the other day we talked about an element being this unique form of matter that serves as a building material for more complex matter. So we made a comparison, right, to bricks, where if I took one brick, it's very, very simple, but if I started piling bricks on top of bricks on top of bricks, even though the things by themselves are very simple, when I put them all together, I can build these really complex things. And the same thing applies to our elements, right? I have carbon, I have hydrogen up here, so if I just had one carbon by itself, it's very, very simple, but then if I start combining carbons to carbons to carbons, and then I start putting hydrogens on them, right, then the things develop and become much more complex. And so elements are kind of those basic building materials that we can put together to make more complex things. We discussed how elements can't be broken apart into two different substances. Um, so we know that the element is the most simple form of a substance that we can have. So you guys did this uh, activity here, new language, where you went through all these vials and you filled in, you know, the names, the chemical formulas, and then descriptions for each of these vials. There were 18 total. Um, and so hopefully in doing that activity, you're able to kind of draw some conclusions and see some similarities between some of those different symbols. Now, um, what you probably also noticed, let's go back here for a second, is that these symbols aren't just elements by themselves, right? The two that are given right here that you started with on your sheet, that they don't just have one single element involved in them. There's several different elements. Um, so what we want to do is kind of look at what, what does that mean? So what we call a compound is a substance that consists of two or more elements that are chemically combined together. So CO2, carbon dioxide, is what we would call a compound. That means that it has one element here and another element here. There's more than one element that's chemically combined together. Now what's really, really interesting is when we look at this little number down here as well. What that represents is that there are, so this O stands for oxygen, this means that there are two oxygen particles, we'll call them particles for right now. Uh, there's two oxygen particles in this compound. And the carbon, when we look at that, you see that there's no numbers next to it. Well, all that means is that there's only one of them. So if there's just one, just like if you, you were doing a math problem and it said 1x plus 4x, you, you would know that you could write, instead of writing 1x plus 4x, you could write the same thing as just x plus 4x. And the same thing applies here, right? When there's one carbon, we don't need to put a little one down here. We can just write the C. All right, so uh, this is actually what we call a chemical formula. So a chemical formula is a set of symbols a chemist used to represent a compound. So instead of having to write out carbon dioxide every time the chemist or the scientist is talking about this thing, he can symbolize it using these formulas. All right, so a chemical formula helps us to kind of use a shorthand so we don't have to write out all these big words all the time. So one more difference that we notice, all right, when you went back and did your activity, you probably saw that there were several bottles that had the same exact chemical formula, all right? So this is CuSO4 and this is CuSO4. But if I look at the pictures, this is a solid, right, it's little rocks, and this is like a blue liquid. So maybe they have that color in common, but it, it doesn't look like they're exactly the same. So how could they possibly have the came, same chemical symbol? How could they be made of the same things? And the key really comes in when we look at this second part of the formula. So I have an AQ and I have an S. What those stand for is the actual state of matter that this element or this compound is. And so we see S, right? S just means it's a solid. Sorry that the D doesn't show up there. Um, and then AQ, we'll put that over here. AQ means that it is actually this thing called an aqueous solution. And aqueous, if you think of like aqua, right? Typically we think of water, so it just means it's in water. 
or dissolved in water. So substance is considered aqueous if it's dissolved in water. So that's these two. We should have seen another two while we were working yesterday. And so um, there's another symbol, G, which obviously would mean that it's a gas. And then an L, and a lot of times I'll draw my L's like that with a, you know, a cursive L, and that just means that it's a liquid. And so uh, it is important to notice that, that the liquid and the aqueous are two different things. There are certain things that could be a liquid without being dissolved in water. So you want to be careful with those. But anytime you see that AQ, you know that it means aqueous. So about these aqueous solutions, right? Every time we mix an aqueous solution, there's a special name for, for the parts that we have. Okay, so there's typically something that we are going to dissolve and then there's something that actually does the dissolving. And so the substance that is being dissolved is called the solute. So in our example over here, right, it's CuSO4 aqueous. Let's write that up top. CuSO4, and it's aqueous. So what is being dissolved, the solute in this example, is the CuSO4. All right, so what I'm doing um, is I'm going to take my CuSO4 and I'm going to add some water to it. And actually this is going to be a solid and our water is just a liquid. And what we get out of that um, is actually not you know CuSO4 H2O Instead of writing all that stuff out, now we can kind of simplify our stuff here and say it's CuSO4 aqueous. So that means that I know that there's H2O, there's water involved in here, and so I don't have to rewrite the H2O and the CuSO4. I can just put them together like that. So the solute is my CuSO4. It's the thing that's, it's the thing that's a solid when I put it together. The substance that actually does the dissolving is the water. So in this case, well, what we do is we call that the solvent. So that's the solvent is the thing that does the dissolving. In this case, it's water. So kind of wrapping our, our things up here. A chemical symbol is what we use to represent an element. Okay, so C stands for carbon, HE stands for helium, chlorine stand, or CL stands for chlorine. Uh, it represents elements that combine to form various substances. So a chemical symbol is just one element. A chemical formula would be for a compound with many elements. You'll notice that every element has either a one or a two letter symbol. So it's either a capital C or HE, so that's a two letter symbol. CL, that's a two letter symbol. The first letter in that system is always capitalized, so the H is capitalized here. Uh, and then the second letter is always lowercase. This is a lowercase E, this is a lowercase L. So that's how we represent different elements. When we go over uh, to our chemical formulas, uh, we know that the chemical formula tells me what elements are in the substance. So, for example, H2O. I know that it's got a hydrogen in it and an oxygen in it. All right, what elements are in it? And it tells us how many or the relative amounts of each element in the substance. So, I have H2O. That means that there's two hydrogens. And O is by itself, so that means there's one oxygen. Or I have K2S. That means there's two K's or potassiums, and there's one S, that's a, a sulfur. And then our other example down here, CaCl2, that means there's one Ca because it's by itself, an uppercase and a lowercase you see, and then Cl2, uppercase and lowercase, and one that means one element, and there's a two here, so that means there's two chlorine atoms there, or two chlorine particles. So I hope this was uh, helpful for you guys. Um, hopefully you've you know taken notes and filled that note sheet out as you've been working through this, um, and we will continue later. Thanks.